The cycling computer market can often be seen as a two-horse race. However, there's a whole bunch of other options out there which pack quite a punch. Now, top-end cycling computers can cost as much as £500. However, I've got a range here which are all sub £200, which offer a lot of the same capabilities. So, we're going to get into them and take a little look. One of the newer companies on the market is Brighton, and while they may not be one of the most popular, they do pack a lot of bang for your buck with their products. The Rider 420 is a fantastic example of this because this little computer here costs little more than £100 once you've had a little shop around. Unfortunately, Brighton computers aren't the easiest of things to figure out. Their user interface can be a little bit tricky to get to grips with, but once you're in, they do start to then make a whole lot more sense and you can unlock all of that functionality. Now, within the 420, you've got 77 and different functions and they can all be accessed through the app as well as the computer itself. Now the computer has Bluetooth and AMP Plus so you can connect to power meters, set speed sensors, cadence sensors, anything you can think of. You can also loop in Strava live segments and also import training peaks workouts on here to execute out on the road. It can also use any one of five GPS networks, which means you can use this throughout the world and you're always going to have a strong connection. And I know the guy who tested this unit, he never had any dropout of signal across the five months that he was using it for. This little unit is packing as much capability as Wahoo Element Bolt just without the full mapping. And when you consider this is just over £100, that is really pretty good going. One downside of this unit is the placement of the buttons. Now, they are in a little bit of a strange place and an out front mount does help alleviate the problem. Trying to get hold of one of those out front mounts has proved to be a little bit tricky and actually it's just a bit annoying that they don't include one in the box. That said though, if you want the features that you'd see on models that are nearly twice the price, then I think the Rider 420 is going to be the one for you. I'm going to give you the entire list of the Cat-Eye Quick's wireless functionalities. Speed, distance, time, and a clock. And that's it. It's beautifully simple. Now, it's not going to be for everyone. However, I think that it does have its place in the market with this very sleek looking design. This little sleek computer gets rid of all the jargon of heart rate monitors, power data, and other nonsense like that and just tells you how far you've been and how long it took you to get there. So it's just incredibly simple and it's incredibly refreshing, to be honest. The unit comes with this out front handlebar mount, which means it has this very sleek, clean look. I'm not too sure why Cat Eye have described the battery life in years, but I'm not complaining at all. I think it's absolutely brilliant. To serious riders or anyone needing any sort of navigational functionality, obviously this won't be for them. However, I think for beginners and commuters, this is all you actually need. It's just a nice, affordable cycling computer that's really made for anyone. While it isn't one of the best looking computers out there on the market, it is probably one of the most valuable. The Lazine Super Pro GPS incorporates navigational functionality, has its own smartphone app, as well as power, cadence, and all the other things you'd expect to see. Strava live segments and live tracking are also built into this thing. The unit small screen might be hard to read, however, you can only ever see a few metrics at a time, and again, that is controlled via the app. For serious or performance-based cyclists that are on a budget, I think this makes for a really good option as it comes in at around £135, but once you've shopped around, you can normally find it for a little bit cheaper. The Polar M460 has some really advanced features and Polar also make Polar Flow, which is the companion app which allows you to set up the unit. Now you can also track your personal diary and all the rides you've been doing through Polar Flow. One other thing that I really like about this unit is that it's got really good Strava integration and that does mean that you've got Strava live segments. Now to go along those smart features, you can also get your smartphone notifications through to it. So you'll never be without a text message or an email. So this unit has a 16 hour battery life, which basically puts it on par with its competitors. However, one thing that it has that they don't is a front light. Now this is something I think is pretty cool and is totally unique to this unit. It's not gonna allow you to see anywhere, but it will just make you a little bit more visible and it is something that I do just quite like. However, that front light doesn't come at a small cost and it is rather pricey when you compare it to its competitors, which can offer cheaper units with mapping and navigational functionalities. 
However, there are a few downsides, one of them being the very small screen, which is 35 millimeters by 35 millimeters, meaning you can only have four data metrics on the screen at any one time, which would be okay if you could cycle through the screens more easily, but due to button placement, you can't, and it makes it really tricky. They're not really that intuitive. Also, there's no AMP Plus, so you are limited to sensors which also offer Bluetooth capabilities, which is slightly annoying when in this day and age everything is pretty much AMP Plus. In summary, the M460 does pretty much everything you want it to, but for me, it doesn't do it in the way that I want it to do it. So I think what it really needs is some more intuitive buttons with better placement, and it desperately needs a larger screen. The headline feature of the Mio Cyclo 210 is its excellent touchscreen and graphics. Now this is bringing that functionality to a whole new price point. However, it does have a decidedly average battery life at 10 hours, but I think it's fair to assume that that is going to be down to the fairly power hungry touchscreen. It's also a bit bulkier than other units, but again, I think we can put that down to the screen. Mio also offers its own mapping software, so you can plan routes out on your computer and then sync it to your head unit. Now, within the computer itself, busy roads will come up as brown and quieter ones will come out as purple, so it allows you to see when you're out there where's going to be a good place to head. You can also type an address into the head unit itself and it will plot a route out for you, so should your plans change mid-ride, then you can update your destination and it will get you there safely. The downsides are pretty major though, as you cannot connect any external sensors. So for most, that is gonna be a bit of a deal breaker, as it means you won't be able to perform specific training sessions out on the road. I think it's fair to say that this head unit is geared more towards gravel riders and long distance riders, where those metrics aren't as important, but having a really clear navigational screen is. Overall, I think it offers a lot of value for money, especially when you do get that color touchscreen. However, if you take your riding any more seriously and you need those performance-based metrics, this one might not be the one for you. The Garmin Edge 130 Plus is about as simple as they come, with only a couple of buttons to navigate around the screens and Bluetooth and AMP Plus capabilities. You can load Strava Live segments onto the 130. Now, this does not have a touchscreen and you are forced to use buttons to navigate around it. But once it's paired with your smartphone, you can then receive calls and text notifications to the head unit itself. Now, when it's also paired, you can then use live tracking and get incident detection. Experienced riders who value performance will really like the 130 because you compare all of your normal sensors to it, but for that lower cost. However, one of the downsides is that the battery life is only claimed to last 12 hours, which in actuality and compared to the other units we've got here, isn't actually that long. To be honest, there's not really too much more to the 130 than that. And I think that's the beauty of it is that it's so simple. It gives you what you need. It's a no frills unit and that is why it's coming in at Garmin's kind of bottom end of the range of their cycling computer offerings. But it's no bad thing. I think for most people that do just want to go out and ride and obviously have all the metrics that they usually want to see, it's going to be ideal. I think the only thing it's really lacking on though is mapping and especially when you consider that this doesn't have mapping compared to the other units that we've got here today. That's where you can really see where this one's falling behind. But like I said, if you know your routes and you know where you're going and you're just going to be doing kind of similar things all the time, then get the numbers from this will work absolutely perfectly. Once again, we've got a model here which is punching well above its weight, especially when you can compare this to a Garmin Edge 530. In addition to power meter connectivity, phone notifications, offline maps rerouting and GPS navigation, the Mega XL GPS really is in a league of its own. The Mega XL GPS even incorporates the ability to take on structured workouts, which is something you would only tend to see from high-end Garmin or Wahoos. The Lazio Mega XL GPS isn't the most beautiful of computers and its screen doesn't have colour, but that only adds value because this is where they've saved some money. The display is functional and the design allows it to incorporate a larger battery, which for this means it will last for up to 48 hours, which actually is quite remarkable. 
The Mega XL GPS can even connect to Lazine's Ally smartphone app, which means that you can control the navigation through the app and then beam it across to the head unit. It certainly feels like this computer is a bit of a steal. So if you're not bothered about a color touch screen, then I think this is probably the one for you. Hopefully I've been able to shine a light on some units you might not have otherwise considered. I think my personal choice, I'd probably go for the Brighton Rider 420. I think it packs in all the punch that you'd want and with a really nice long battery life. However, if you think there's a head unit out there which is slightly underrated and people don't know about, drop it down in the comments because I think we'd all love to hear about it. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content and I'll see you again very soon.